Good evening and welcome to River Life Church International's Wednesday Night Bible Study. My name is Pastor Joe Stefalo, and we're going to continue on our study on the spiritual disciplines for the Christian life. And before we get into um, that service, tonight's service, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your word, God. And I thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord God, I just ask in the name of Jesus that you would bless us tonight with truth and let us sense the working of your Holy Spirit within our lives for your glory and for your honor. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're going to continue on this thought of worship and Last week was just a beautiful thing where we talked about another spiritual discipline concerning worship and that talking about we must worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. And, you know, when Jesus was tempted by the enemy in the desert, and we also talked about in Psalms 95, 1 through 7, um, that come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. We are the people He watches over, the flock under his care and that there's purpose to our worship and we had shared about that last week and so we talked about worship is focusing on and responding to God. So that whole thing about focusing and knowing who God is and focusing and responding to who he is and we talked about how we in Revelation, you know, the worship that's going on up in up in heaven right now holy 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 lord god almighty almighty who was and is to come you are worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and and are created and we just we just went on and on and this to ascribe that proper worth towards god is that when we know and we focus on god we respond to him with, with authentic worship, a worship that really gives him worship that is due his name, that worthiness of his name. He's worthy of so much. And it's, there's so, um, right there, we, that, that we understand how, how worthy he is. And that the more and the more we appreciate them, that we can't help but to respond to him in worship. So that was last week, and this week we're going to continue on with worship is. You know, for John chapter 4, 23 through 24, Jesus said, But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must, must worship in spirit and in truth. And if you ever come to a Saturday night prayer, you know, each department gets up and prays and so the worship uh, leaders, Pastor Jalen and Pastor Marcus, get up and man, I can't tell you how many times that they've, they've shared their heart in prayer and heart for that Sunday morning worship that, it would, that we would worship God in spirit and in truth. And it's so important. that, But and, and it's a must. Jesus says we must, we must. He's, he's, the Father is seeking such worship, and, there, and, that, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Before we can truly worship, we must have within us the one whose name is the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. In order to truly worship God, we need to have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. You know, John 14, 17, Jesus also talks about the spirit of truth. We need the spirit of truth because he's the revealer. He's the one who reveals God to us. He's the one that reveals the word and reminds us and, 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 and moves us towards truth And because we can't truly do it. We can't truly worship God and honor him like we should without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 3 also says, So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say 
Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. No, it says right here, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So we have to understand we need the Holy Spirit that in order to worship, uh, worship God in spirit and in truth is that we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit um, living within us to help us to truly worship God and give him honor and praise. Because no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And see, true worship is motivated, motivated by the Holy Spirit is what we need and should desire. See, that's the worship. The, the true worship should be motivated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is the one who reveals God to us, gives us an irresistible desire to worship. The one who brings life within us and the one who sends fire and a passion for worship. That is who the Holy Spirit is. We need the Holy Spirit. And there must be a posture of sincerity within us when it comes to worship. And, and, and that posture, that sincerity will come when the Holy Spirit is within us and moving within us. And we invite the Holy Spirit to, to help us to give the, the right kind of worship and honor and praise that is due to God. We can't do it on our own. We, we, we've, you've, lived, you've lived this long with yourself as I've lived this long with myself, and I know that when my worship is dead is because I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to move in me and, and through me and to help me to worship. And it's those moments where, man, I just, I'm worshiping, just I have to worship, even though it feels like I'm not getting anywhere. Those are, those are moments we have. We need the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean you're a backslidden Christian. Don't by all means, because we all go through this, okay? But what it does mean is that there's something that something's kind of out of balance. There's something not clicking that we have to we have to understand. And sometimes it's situational. Sometimes it's uh, um, circumstantial. Sometimes it's our emotions, our feelings, our own minds. Some things that uh, our hearts where they're just. You know, they can be deceiving at times, okay? And it can get us off track and get us on a different um, trajectory. And, but it doesn't mean that we're not a Christian. It doesn't mean that we don't love God, but there's something. But we push through and he asks the Holy Spirit to help us. And he will help us. He's a revealer, right? We read that he reveals. So we need that posture. We need that help of the Holy Spirit to bring that sincerity when it comes to worship, whether it's in public or in private. To worship God in truth means that we are worshiping according to the truth of Scripture. And it's, it's no other, it's not our own ideas of God that we worship Him, but it's only by the biblical standard, the biblical view of God that we worship Him. So we can have our own ideas of God, and we know that sometimes the only way people can get into worship or whatever, even ourselves, that we have our own thoughts and feelings, and da, da, da. And sometimes those thoughts and feelings don't even line up with the Word of God. We let our emotions, we let our feelings, we let our minds, we let our hearts deceive us and go down different directions that, that are not biblical. But if we, we will not go wrong when it comes to worshiping God in spirit and in truth. When we worship God according to the truth of His Word, His script, the Scriptures. Amen. When we consume His truth, we worship according to such. When we consume His truth, the way, the truth, and life is Jesus Christ. So when we consume Christ into our lives, we will worship accordingly. And in that we're going to see our worship change. For the better. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. The only perfect worship is in heaven, right? And we'll only really understand perfect worship is when we get to heaven someday. And that's going to be exciting because it's going to be 24 7 worshiping God. That's going to be such an exciting time. And <clears throat> so we need to consume truth. And when we consume truth, we will worship in truth. Worship is a way of gladly reflecting back to God 
the radiance of his worth. And we talked about that last week as well. The worth and that radiance of that worth of God. When we know the worth, his worth, there's going to be such a reflection back to him. And that we're going to, we're going to gladly reflect back to him. That praise and that glory, that radiance of his worth through worship. That's part of that spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to share that worth and give us that understanding. He's the spirit of understanding, right? And, and he, that to give us to understand that worth of God is so powerful. And it will do something in our worship. We'll see breakthrough in situations. We will, we will <laughs> worship is dynamic worship is, is so powerful. Anointed dynamic worship, and that is a foundation of River Life Church International, is to have that dynamic, anointed worship that's going to give God glory and honor and praise, and also it's going to break through strongholds, it's going to break through um, uh, um, uh, the, the works of the enemy, and, and it'll, it'll usher in healing and miracles and signs and wonders. We need the Holy Spirit, and that is, is from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And I love that's a foundation of this church, and it's a biblical foundation. It's a biblical view, scriptural view of how worship should be, not only in the public, not, in, not, not only in the church building on a Sunday morning or, or on a special worship night, but also in our homes, also in our um in our private lives, in our offices, in our cars, as we're driving to work, or, or in our prayer closets, our worship closets, whatever. It's so important. Amen. You know, today is a maze and, and, and my ninth wedding anniversary, okay? And it's hard to believe it's been nine years uh, of, of marriage, and I praise God for my wife, and and it is nine years. I praise God for what he has done and the growth and even the ups and downs that have brought just wonderful um, things and teachings and uh, foundation and uh, solidarity and just everything. I, I thank God. We wouldn't be where we're at today in our marriage if it wasn't for the grace of God. And I thank him and I love her so much. And, but what if, you know, I brought her flowers today. And I just want to give kind of a um, kind of an idea, a word picture here. What if when I brought Ame her flowers that I bought for our anniversary today, and when I approached her at the door, and what she did, and she answered it, and I gave them to her, and she gives me the biggest hug and kiss, and she's surprised, and just oh, she's just. She's just smelling the roses, and she's, she's um, this is actually what she did, and she has a tear in her eye and, and a big smile on her face, and she's, oh, they smell so good. They're so beautiful. They're so fresh. They're the best arrangement. She said there was the best arrangement she's ever gotten, and, I, and it's just beautiful. And she goes, Joe, these are so beautiful. Thank you. Suppose I hold up my hand, and I say, matter-of-factly, don't mention it. It's my duty. It was my duty. As your husband, it was my duty. Don't mention it. Okay. What happens? It is not the exercise of duty. Is it? It's a, here's a couple questions. Is it, an, is it not the exercise of, of duty a noble thing, right? Or do not we honor those who we, who we dutifully serve? Not if there's no heart in it. Dutiful roses, dutiful, not beautiful, dutiful roses are a contradiction in terms, actually. If I'm not moved by spontaneous affection for a man as a person, the roses don't, do not honor her. In fact, they will belittle her, actually. They are like a very thin... Um, covering for the fact that she does not have the worth or beauty in my eyes to kindle an affection. And all I can get out is a calculated expression of this marital duty. Okay? It's, don't, 
Matter of factly, don't mention it. It's my duty as your husband. After all these years, after these nine years, it's still my duty to give you flowers on our anniversary, May 18th. Okay? See, the real duty of worship is not the outward duty or to say or, or do. It's the inward duty, the command that we read in Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight, delight, delight. It is our delight. And this delight honors God. It's what if to go on, if I were to take a May out to supper tonight, when <laughs> anniversary being on Wednesday night, really busy night, and you know, Judd is like, oh, We've got church tonight. Okay, yep, we do. If I were to take a May out for uh, this evening for our anniversary supper or whatever, and she asked me, Why do you do this? And I answer, and, and, and that answer that honors of May, get it, not dishonor, but honors of May would be like this. Because nothing makes me happier tonight than to be with you. Nothing makes me more happier tonight than to be with you. That is a response that honors her. See, it's my duty <laughs> dishonors her. It's my joy is what honors her. It's my joy. See, that's the worship. Is that why should we honor God? How should we honor God in worship? By saying, it's my duty, or by saying, it's my joy? It's my joy. It's, or so it's my duty. I know I'm supposed to worship you, God. I know it's my duty, and I'm going to worship. Or is it say, it's my joy. I get to worship my creator, my God, the, the one who is holy, 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 the one that sits on the throne and, 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 and is all-powerful and all-knowing and and is everywhere at all times, and, and that he loves me so much, and that he's delivered me from sin and death through his son, Jesus Christ. It is my joy to worship you because of what you have done and who you are, and, 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 and that you've delivered me, you have set me free, that you have changed my life, and, and that I, 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 it's my joy to honor and to worship you, my God. This is the kind of heart, this, the right kind of heart for God longs to be guided by truth, to be guided by the Spirit, to be guided by truth. That's the right kind of heart that, is, that God longs for, is for our hearts to be guided by His truth and by His Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark 12, 30 says, And you must love the Lord God, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Amen. We must love the Lord our God. And there's something that happens in our worship when we love Him and we allow His truth and His Word and His Holy Spirit to dwell in us. There's a joy to worship. So I encourage you here tonight and this week and in your spiritual life and spiritual you know, discipline for your life following after God is to press on. Press on in worship. A heart's cry should be for a renewed awareness of the streams of living water. You know, Jesus talked about that in John chapter 7, verse 38. Streams of living water that would flow in every believer. And I, I declare over you that tonight that you're going to have a, a new Renewed awareness of the streams of living water because of the Holy Spirit, because of His truth, because of His Word flowing in you. Press on in worship. Don't stop worshiping. Never give up in the desert. Never give up in the desert because you want to know something. You never know how wide it is, and you may be almost across it. You never know. Keep on worshiping. Even in the midst of the desert, even in the midst of the dry places of life, keep on worshiping in spirit and in truth because you never know. You might are so close to getting across that desert into, into, into where God has taken you. Trust Him. Trust Him. Because it's my joy, it's your joy to worship God.
in spirit and in truth. And I encourage you with this word here tonight. God bless you and have a great rest of your week.